Today's video is sponsored by Sophie and Toffee's Elves Box. Check the link down below for savings. Can you believe there's a tiny working kitchen in here? Yes, we have a miniature kitchen that actually bakes and cooks real food. In a previous video, I got miniature working kitchen supplies, such as a blender that looks and sounds like this. We even got a miniature working vacuum that is, you know what, here's a preview. And many more miniature kitchen working supplies. If you're interested in watching that video, I will link it down below. But, 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 but. We have a real working stove, a real working oven, and a real working kitchen sink. I haven't unboxed it yet, so we're going to be doing that together. And hey, maybe we can cook something before the end of this video and maybe even decorate it. I'm, I'm curious. I don't know what I'm in for, so I, I'm just really excited. Let me know in the comment section below what future recipes would you like to see me cook? Now, just to be very clear, I am really good at cooking things, but I'm not good at baking desserts. So if you're going to recommend a dessert, please make sure that it is a boxed item, something easy for me to make. <laughs> and if you're new here and you're excited to see miniature cooking, make sure that you do subscribe and click on all notifications while you're there, which will make you a grain of salt in the Salt Shaker family. Oh, and I, I do have to let you know, I do have a miniature fridge that I kind of want to decorate too. I like small things, most times. So as you can see here, we do have two separate boxes, one for the sink and one for the kitchen. Now I did get all of these from Real Miniature Worlds, who when I placed my order ended up being a green also within the community. So full disclosure, I bought this myself. This is not sponsored nor affiliated, but if you're interested in any of this stuff, definitely feel free to check out my videos, my opinions, and make your own decision based on what you see. Just to let you know, they, they are, they're not cheap because they are handmade. So I like supporting handmade products. So my guess is that this here is the sink and this is the kitchen. So let's start with the one that should be easiest to explore. Oh, that is heavy. I'm gonna go put you down here very safely. I'm actually excited to see, oh my God. I'm excited to see how this is gonna work. Okay, here we go. Oh my God, that is so cute. Holy shrimp, holy shrimp, holy guacamole and shrimps. Okay, we need to be gentle. I don't wanna make any mistakes cutting it. So we're gonna go from the bottom like so. Okay. Oh, that is adorable. Oh my God. No, stop. I'm already absolutely in love. I thought that this was actually going to be a little bit more rough around the edges, but here you can see it is made out of wood. These things are laminated. Look at that. This is absolutely gorgeous. Can we open? Oh, we can open you. <gasps> what is in here? Is that decoration? Oh my goodness. Okay, we have a plant. Let's open you. Oh no. What are you? These must have been extras. These must have been extras. Or is this, is this a battery pack? I don't know what you are. Oh, this must be the pump. Okay, this is probably the pump to get the water actually flowing. So interesting. We do have our space under here to put little cleaning products and whatnot. Kind of like a real kitchen, at least under my kitchen sink, it really is cleaning stuff. Cute. Oh, what? Okay, hang on. So we, it looks like we have a pipe so that the water can come down and then another pipe so that the water can drain somewhere else. I thought the water would accumulate. This is even better than I thought, okay? I'm in love. Oh my God. Okay, and these cupboards actually have separation. So look at that. Wait, that means they must have tiny hinges. Where's the hinges? The hinges are hidden. Let's see if we can find them. No, they're hidden. Holy carp, the craftsmanship. And I did ask for specific colors and I asked for the counter to be a marble looking type. Look at this. The detail wraps all the way around. I thought it would only be on top, but no. And let's see the sink. How does this move? Okay, front and up and back. Okay, so I'm guessing this is neutral zone. Cute. Okay, there were no instructions that went with it. So let's see where the USB goes. Okay, this is the pump and this is out. So this must be everything. But this plant is definitely cute. Let's see you. I have no idea what plant you are because I am not good at keeping plants. Does it sit well? Oh, that is cute. This makes me want to just make tiny items out of clay and put them all over. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I love you. Actually, hang on. You can't see it too well. So let's put our trusty felt here. Now you can see the plant properly. Okay, so what I did, at least I think, because I couldn't find information on the website, is this one here says pump and this one says out. So I connected the pump here and it is a USB. So luckily I do have a plug not far away. And I think, I'm not sure, I think I'm supposed to put this inside a cup of water like this. I don't know. We're gonna find that out together. And it is the one that says pump. So I'm gonna put this over here, like a so. And the other one that's going to drain, I'm going to put it in this cup, because I need it to stay low. So I'm gonna take some washi tape. 
And I'm gonna tape this right here like a so. That's my setup right now. <laughs> All right, so let's put you like this. We have you over here. And let's go ahead and plug in the USB. Is that gonna work? Oh my God! Ooh, oh wait, filling too fast, filling too fast. Wait, how do I turn it off? Is it this way? Okay, we're gonna do this. I think this is turned off. I'm gonna hold this here, hopefully that works. Okay, so the pump is here. You can definitely hear it. And we're gonna let the water flow. Look at that! Oh my god. Oh, hang on. It's not in the water enough. There we go. Oh no. D Hello? Oh no. Pump, are you okay? Well, that didn't work out. Give me a second. Okay, so change of plans for the setup. I ended up elevating the actual sink because I wanted gravity to work in our favor. So the water is going to empty over here. And I ended up putting the pump more horizontally. Pat helped me figure it out. And hopefully that's going to help us drain. So clearly we need a little bit more water for it to go down here, but basically it's on a little bit of a platform. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. We should hear the pump go now. There we go. There you go. Look at it. And we can do the flow. This is lower flow, higher flow, but it looks like it doesn't like it when there's not enough flow because then it just freaks out. Oh my God, the sink is filling up. So let's let it drain. Look at it drain. Oh my God. Okay, that is cute. Definitely there are some downsides to the fact that the pump freaked out when I closed this. Not sure why. Actually, you know what? Let's try it. Okay, so if we stop this, is it gonna freak out? Kind of, but not too much. Okay, not too bad. I think it really needs to be horizontal, so that's good to know. Okay, horizontal works. Chef's kiss. Oh my god, emptying water, stop. <laughs> okay, we're good, it's draining. Okay, we got it to work. Now let's go ahead and see our actual stove and oven setup. And now for my baby. Actually, they're all my baby, but this one, this one I'm really curious to see. So here we should be getting our little working kitchen. Now I don't remember if I ordered the whole setup like this. I truly don't remember. Or if we only get a half wall. So I guess we'll find out. Cause this, I, it's supposed to match the sink by the way. So let's take you out. What's in here? Oh my God, what's in here? Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're gonna have to build this. Here we have the floor. I'm guessing this is the wall, I'm not sure. But before we open all the little tidbits, let's go ahead and open the main event. Oh my God. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, stay up. Can you do that for me or are you? Yeah, it stays up. Hopefully it stays up. Okay, what the heck? This is a door. Yeah, this, this door is gonna wanna stay here. I'm gonna have to see if I can put a magnet of some sort or even a little swivel. I'm not sure, but this keeps wanting to fall. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on that. <laughs> okay, these are drawers. Try not to hold them like Jackie. Don't be a Jackie. Let's put you back in. Oh, hang on, that's the lower drawer right here. Okay, hang on, Jackie, Jackie, drawer. Okay, I'm gonna tape this because it's kind of getting a little extra. I'm gonna keep you here. A little piece of washi tape, just for now, like so. I might put metallic hinges just so that it stops moving back and forth. That way I have better control. So the first thing I noticed is, okay, Jackie, you gotta stop doing that. <laughs> what the heck? Here, stop moving. Okay, we're gonna do it this way. The countertops are very different from the other one when it comes to the sink. They're two different designs. Now I don't think I asked for two different designs, but that could just be me. Let me double check. So yes, according to my email, I did say the kitchen and the sink having the same black handles, counter, and drawer design. Okay, so I did do that. So there seems to have been a minor error. Jackie from the future here. Yes, I did ask for two different counters, but what I didn't notice is that the counter for the oven needed to be different because it's heat proof. And I also talked about the oven door that keeps opening and I'm going to get a replacement for the door. So that's all fixed. It's not going to be too bad because I do have exposure pretty high up. Let's see them side by side. Actually, that is that is quite the difference. One is a little bit more marble. The other one is really a little bit more horizontal line. It's hard to explain, but I mean, they do match and my lighting's pretty bright, so it's not too dramatic. I guess the most important thing is to make sure that these here match. These, well, I guess they just won't be in the same shot at the same time all the time, but okay. Still cute, but I wish they were the same. I'll definitely contact her just to see what's going on. Otherwise, we do have a small cupboard also similarly to the other ones with the sink. And then we have little drawers. I'm pretty sure we can put our little cutlery, our baking stuff all in here. So they don't have stoppers as you've seen me do this. So they do easily come out. So 
Just keep that in mind and don't be a Jackie. And then we have the two burners. Now I don't think there's going to be a scenario where I'm going to actually use both burners at the same time. Maybe when I gain confidence I will at some point. But as I touch them, these are metallic pieces. So they should be more than fine. I don't know the materials that they're using, but I mean, it's used for actual cooking. So this is going to be interesting. And then we have the stove that seems to just want to open up. And my guess is because my desk is wonky. And you can see there's tiny details of the little buttons right in front. Front, and when we open it, this is metal, and there's a ventilation over here. So I'm guessing it's so that the heat can actually escape so that it doesn't overheat on the inside. So when we're actually cooking food on top, we're going to put the tea light candle in here. Yes. We're going to be using these candles to actually cook. So they go up here for cooking foods up here and down here if we're going to be baking cakes or cookies and whatnot. So my guess the reason that this here is pretty heavy is because the display is actually glass. But again, I feel like having a metallic hinge over here might actually help. All right, so let's go ahead and put this baby over here. In a previous video, we have done miniature resin crafting. If you feel like you want to get more deeper into resin crafting, now is the perfect time to talk about today's sponsor, Sophie and Toffee's Elves Box. For those of you who don't know Sophie and Toffee's Elves Box, they are a monthly subscription box of resin and mold type crafts. So every month you get everything you need to create a project, yes, including the resin, to work around a curated theme. And Sophie and Toffee upgraded their box so that there are more items. So you get a mixture of exclusive items and non-exclusive with each box. Let's make a cute project from the hollow box. Let's make a butterfly. Pour the resin in equal parts and poof. Separated them in three, adding pink, blue, green, poof. Look how pretty these look. Let's go ahead and take color turns to make this butterfly even prettier. Now we let it sit overnight. And now we're going to go ahead and unmold it. And holy carp, how gorgeous is it that you can see the holographic effect on the mold itself? Yes, we have the glitter, but we have that extra layer of holographic from the mold. You can see it better with the square one that I'm showing you here. And I have to say the holographic effect in those molds are absolutely gorgeous. So if you really like to collect molds like I do, these are quite cute. And now more than ever, it is one of the best times to subscribe to a Sophie and Toffee's Elves box because if you subscribe monthly, you get a UV lamp included. If you subscribe for three months, you get an entire starter kit. And if you subscribe for six months, you get an electric resin stirrer. So what are you waiting for? Check the link down below and use the code NERDY5OFF to get $5 off your first subscription. Again, the link in the coupon will be in the description box below as well as the pinned comment. Thank you Sophie and Toffee for sponsoring a portion of today's video. And I know that when I got this set, I'm supposed to have gotten also some extras, which I think are pots and pans as well as some utensils or basically cooking supplies. So I'm hoping these are all in here because I don't see them anywhere else. All right, we got you. And, oh, hello. What's all this? Okay, oh my God. Okay, okay, hang on. What are you? Okay, so I'm guessing this is going to be the light for cooking, which is absolutely adorable. I don't remember this, but I'm glad. Okay, let's pull one thing at a time. We have a frying pan. Okay, sweet. You can never have too many frying pans. So let's cook something before the end of this video. I'm really excited. And look at the box it comes in. What the heck? This is like buying real, actual, tiny stuff from the store. Except the ones in the store don't come in a box. Unless they're like super bougie. And then, this one is another box. What are you? No way! We have a tiny baking pan? I totally forgot about this one. Okay, so we actually have a cake pan. Because the other one that I got in the previous video seemed more like a cookie sheet rather than a cake pan. Let's see how deep this one- oh, that is deep. That is perfectly deep. Okay, and we can push it out like this. Cute, okay, that is neat. I'm hoping it's not going to leak from over here. Then again, I don't know much about baking, but I hope it's not going to leak from there. I really hope not. If anyone knows about these things, let me know if I'm going to make a mess. And on the box itself, it says uniform heating and strong connectivity. Conductivity, not very good at knowing what this is. So again, here it is. I wonder if I could just push, okay, I did. <laughs> I pushed it and sealed it off, I think. There you go. So we have a heart cooking. So we can make a little, a little cake at some point. And then, oh, that is cute. We have a fun Funfetti box. So this is just the box, I believe. I don't think we're gonna have any powder mixing, but this is a nice little addition to add as decoration to the kitchen. And then, I guess this is going to be something we're going to have to put together. What are you? There's double-sided glue, so we're gonna figure that out later. Next, we have, what are, more cake batter? Cute. We have Duncan Hines rainbow confetti. So we have two different boxes for different kinds of cakes. Actually, I think I see a third one. And the answer is yes. 
This one is a Pillsbury. So we have Pillsbury, Duncan Hines, and what are you? Oh, more, Pil more Pillsbury. Okay, cute. And here we go. This is what I was looking for. Here we have the little cooking utensils. Oh, they go on the wall. That's true, I forgot about that. So here's where we're going to put them. Here we have a Scoopy. I definitely don't have the right words for it. Another Scoopy. We have two Scoopies. One of them is actually more closed off and this one's flat. So this would be more like for omelets. This one would be more for mixing. Then we have a ladle. So great for soups and stews. And this is more like a strainer type. So I guess we can scoop out items that we don't want the liquid to be in. I guess like pasta and things perhaps. You know, now that I think about it, I feel like I need more things. And I'm not sure what these are just yet. So I'm going to figure that out. So basically when this goes on the wall, this is going to hook on in here. Hello? Yes? Yes. You have to kind of wiggle them in. I guess I'm just going to leave them. Oh, hang on. That's upside down. There. I'm probably going to leave them in the drawers. Just, just to be very clear. I'm not very organized. But essentially, if I were organized, they would look like this. So you could put them on, on top of the kitchen if you wanted to. But since I am me, they're going to go in here. There you go. And now we have the little papers. You know what? I finally found the part where it talks about the pump and it shows that the pump and the release can be in the same basin. And it makes sense because then the water just recycles and you don't have to worry about losing any water. You just, it just, it feeds in and feeds out into the same bowl. So I'm not going to bore you grains with all the information. I'm going to go ahead and set it up and let's make something. And here it is put together. Now I had to make a bit of a decision because you can actually put the little light on top and a shelf. But because I'm recording this pretty close and I do have really good lighting, I didn't want to obstruct my light with them on there. So I'm going to have to sacrifice them for the sake of recording. And I have to say, this is absolutely adorable. The floor is kind of tiny for the entire kitchen, as you can see here. So I'm probably going to just replace it with my own kind of paper flooring. But the fridge really works well here. I'm really happy with the size of the fridge. It is spot on. And now I need some fake produce to put in here. I did at some point make a live stream where we organized this entire fridge but I think I actually gave away the miniature. So here we have the fridge and then the below compartments were fridge and then freezer and freezer. So the ones with the handles were the freezers and the rest were basically fridge compartments. I do have cute things though. So we're gonna have to have live streams here and actually organize this kitchen. So make sure you have subscriptions turned on and notifications turned on. Okay, let's go ahead and make a quick breakfast type meal for my first one. I have to say I'm actually pretty nervous. I don't know why I actually cook really size. Why is tiny size so scary? So we're going to make an omelet with peppers, onions, some cheese. I also got some coriander as a garnish, but we're also going to have a side of bacon. I know it's ambitious. <laughs> I think the first thing we're going to do is make sure that we cut our veggies pretty small. I keep saying omelet, but I, what I mean is scramble. And we do have one of the sharpest knives I have ever tried. And yes, this does work. And yes, you can watch the unboxing in the previous video. Okay, we have our onions right here. Okay, let's see how well this actually cuts. Oh my God. Holy shrimp. What? This is absolutely phenomenal. Look at this. We have tiny onions. Now for red peppers. Oh my God. Look at that. That is absolutely sharp. This is as sharp as my knives at home for bigger things. And this one might be a bit of a pain in the bum, but let's go ahead and do some of the greens. What the heck? That slices really well. Look at this. Super cute. Definitely watch your fingers. I'm eventually going to work on better camera angles for you grains, but for now, I'm just trying to get through and make this properly. <laughs> Okay, I think that's good enough for garnish. Now, unfortunately, I don't have tiny eggs, nor do I know where to get tiny eggs. So I'm going to be using the mixer bowl and eggs that I already whisked from a full egg. I, I don't know how this is going to work. We're going to get you in here. Oh, goodness. I think that's good enough. And here's how we're going to season it. We're going to use some salt and black pepper. Again, I've never worked with these amounts. So I'm hoping I'm not making salty eggs. Take a little spoon. Guessing this should be enough. Doesn't feel enough. I'm going to say this is a good amount. And black pepper is definitely to taste. I really do like black pepper, like so. And we're going to take our fork and mix it all up. All right, now let me just remove the washi tape, but we're gonna probably keep the washi tape on because I don't want anything opening by accident. Here's our tea candle. I'm gonna put it in here and I need to make sure that it is as aligned as possible. So that's pretty good. There is no temperature gauge. So it's just, you go, there's just go. Okay, let's turn this on. Ooh, don't be a Jackie. Only turn that on here. Are you on? 
There we go. I think this is working. Let me check. So I'm guessing this is a tiny heat. So this is what it looks like from the top. And we're gonna close this back up like so. And we're gonna put this thing right on top. This is this is where it gets real now. I don't know how quickly it heats up. You know what, let me put my hand. Oh, that is hot. That is hot. It doesn't look like there's much heat, but that is hot. So let's put you here. And we're gonna start off with the bacon. Oh, that is getting hot already. I'm pretty nervous, I have to say. Now I don't know how anti-stick these things are, so I'm just gonna put a smidge of oil despite the fact that we are putting bacon, so just a little bit, just a couple of drops, and not hot enough yet. We're gonna swirl this. Oh, that is, that is interesting. That is a whole new level. And as it's heating up, the handle is warm and it does say to actually use a little towel. So we're going to use a little towel to make sure that we do not get burnt. Gauging the temperature here, it does feel pretty warm. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the bacon. And here's our first piece, second piece. So interestingly enough, even though the pan does feel hot, I expected there to be a bit of a sizzle with the bacon, but I'm not getting that. So what I'm going to do is close this element off to try and see if we can keep a little bit more of that heat. And let's wait and see what happens. The candle's still going. We're just waiting for the bacon to bacon. For me, good, we're finally getting a sizzle and you can see it here. Now, unfortunately, I thought the sounds would be a lot more dramatic. Maybe that's just me, but maybe it needs to be warmer. But we have to get really close. Here, let me bring you. You can hear the tiny sizzle from here. And I'm just going to turn the handle on the other side and let's go ahead and flip the bacon. Oh my God, that's so tiny. <laughs> Turn you, oh my God, I need to work on my tiny, oh my gosh, tiny flippage and tiny flippage. Now I have to say, I didn't think tiny cooking would take this long, but I've been leaving this bacon on here for about 10 minutes now. So let's go ahead and remove it. Let's drain it over here. You come here, it feels crispy. It just doesn't sound crispy. There we go, look at that. If that ain't beautiful and glistening, I don't know what is. Voila. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our veggies. Now this is actually how I make my own scramble eggs at home so if you want to try this recipe go for it we're putting the peppers and onions like I saw and we're gonna add a smidge of salt a smidge of pepper and now we mixy mixy come on you got this now again this is still moving really slow the heat is just not enough but you can see that the candle there's still a lot of space between the candle and the actual area where we're cooking so what I might do for next time is put aluminum foil underneath it to kind of prop it up a little higher because otherwise we're working on this speed I'm just sitting here waiting for this to cook it's not possible that this is taking longer than actual cooking. But look at that. Let's see if you can hear it. Let's bring you closer. Definitely not enough heat. So if you have advice, please give them to me in the comment section below as well. Okay, I think this is cooked just enough. Oh, is it making noise? Yes. Okay, hopefully there's a sizzle with the eggs. Let's hear that. No, no egg sizzle. Okay, please, please cook. Yeah, the heat is definitely a problem here. Have you started cooking? Yes, there we go. We're starting to get a little bit of a scramble. Nice, very nice. Holy carp, 15 minutes later and we're working on this omelet. I think this is cooked enough. I generally don't like my omelets too overcooked. Kind of like them a little goopy droopy. And this looks about to be the right consistency. I think so. It's holding its own. Oh goodness, that should be good enough. All right, so we're gonna move you out of here. All right, candles are off. Let's move you. And let's go ahead, put our omelet right here. I'm, I have a lot to learn, grades, so please educate me. That's looking cute. Voila, that is cute. And here we have our tiny bacon. Voila. Oh goodness, I forgot about the garnish. Let's go ahead and put the garnish. Oh gosh, <laughs> a little garnish. Put our greens on top. I have some cheese. Put three of everything, like so. And then two slices of toast. That looks good. What the heck? And here's the breakfast that took me close to 40 minutes to make. We're definitely going to have to work on the heat level just so that it doesn't take us that long to cook anything else. But let's go ahead and taste it. So I'm going to get this here. I don't even know, am I supposed to eat this or am I gonna get like extra metal in me? Yeah, tastes exactly as how I make it when it's not miniature. We can even add a little bit of eggs on our toast, like a so, and a piece of cheese, like a so. And yeah, it tastes, it tastes perfect. <laughs> the only thing I'm worried about is the bacon. So let's go ahead and take a piece of bacon because it didn't seem like it was cooking hard enough. But yeah, it's cooked all the way through. Overall, this is exactly like real cooking, except I don't have control over the heat. So I'm really excited to try so many different recipes. Again, leave them down below and let me know your thoughts or advice. If you want to watch the unboxings of all the other real miniatures, make sure you check up here. And if you wanna watch something a little different, 
Make sure you click down here. Until then, I will see you grins in the next video.